Yo, what's going on? What's going on, everybody? It's Apocalypse Phoenix with another video. Let's start. That's Enderman right there. I'll put uh, I'll give you all my socials, all music platform stuff at the end of the video. But uh, thank you for checking out this video. Um, it's gonna be about self defense and how important self defense is for yourself. Um. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, can you even defend yourself? Like, that's one of the things that I see uh, going on with uh, guys, especially guys. Because that's the crazy thing. Like, I'm talking to guys about this, too. Because most of the time, you know, it's like self-defense. You think women. It's like, okay. But now, nowadays, a lot of guys are so soft, so out of shape that they can't even defend themselves. So I wanted to do a self-defense video. Um, uh, let's see, this guy right here. This is Jason Hansen with four simple self-defense techniques everyone should know, 100% effective. Jason, Jason Hansen, he's on YouTube. Go check out his uh, YouTube channel. I really like this video here because he doesn't give you... Um, He's not giving you like moves, like necessarily like moves, like do this move one, this one move and you're good. He he actually breaks it down for you. Um, just like the, the generals of self-defense. So again, this is Apocalypse Phoenix. Thank you for checking out my video. Hit the like button, hit the follow button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button. Um, you know, because I'm, I'm everywhere. And I appreciate you guys stopping in and watching this video. Let's get into it. Um, but before we do, I just, I just want to say again, self-defense, it's your responsibility, especially nowadays. Like, especially in big cities, small cities where, I mean, it just, it doesn't matter where you're at. Big cities, they're too busy. You Sometimes you call the police department and you get a, a busy signal. You know, or or they have to the person has to be damn near on you, attacking you for them to be like, all right, we'll send somebody out there. Uh, small cities sometimes they they just don't have the the officers needed to police you know such a big area in a rural area. So again, you know, self defense is going to be on you. And nowadays, there's so many people out of shape, which is going to be the biggest hindrance of you. Uh, defending yourself because you can watch this video, you can get tips, but if you're out of shape, if you can't run, if you can't throw a couple punches, you know, if your, your cardio is just so bad, you, you know, you take off running and five steps, you're like, uh, like, like Homer Simpson, <gasps> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, to me, the biggest hindrance, other than not knowing how to defend yourself. To me, the biggest, the other biggest hindrance is your health. Could you even maintain five to six punches? Could you maintain yourself, your cardio, hitting somebody in the balls and then taking off running while they're chasing you? Or, or in another scenario, like this guy says, a lot of times, sometimes attacks, um, they, it's not one person, it's going to be multiple people. Um, so let's get into this video and get these tips from Mr. Jason here, Jason Hansen. And um, I'll give you my take on what he's saying here because you know, I do practice more Muay Thai, it's been going on two years. I've been an athlete my whole life. My dad was a Golden Gloves boxer. So, of course, he taught us, you know, a couple moves. Um, and then just, you know, I had my era of fighting, you know. Sometimes when you grow up wild and crazy, it happens. Um, and I just kind of had this natural this natural uh, proclivity to just, just smack dudes up, you know. I wasn't playing. I wasn't there, there to wrestle or anything. I was just there to hurt you. Um so I know about street fights and I know about defending myself. Um, it's become so important to me 
within the last couple of years just because of what I see happening all around. More homeless people, more people on drugs that are homeless, more people that have, you know, they take so much drugs and alcohol that, that they are now mentally unstable. They're talking to people on the streets. They're walking in the streets. They're yelling. You don't know what they're going to do. You don't. And you just see it more and more. More home invasions, more uh, carjackings. And even if that wasn't the case that crime was rising, I'd still say be healthy and learn how to take care of yourself. Um, because you don't know. You could be at a movie theater. You could be at a park. You could be walking out of the mall. You don't know. You could be sitting in your own home and something could pop off. Someone could attack you. What are you going to do? Do you even have hands? Can you even defend yourself? There are guys out here that I talk to that I like talking to people, you know, when I'm out and about. I like talking to cashiers, especially if it's stores I go to on a regular basis. And some of the guys that I see, I ask them, hey, do you work out, man? What would happen? And this this really happened. This guy works at Dollar Tree that I go to a lot. He looks like a good kid. You know, I just want men to be doing good and, and, and I want men to be strong. I don't want men to live these sad, lonely lives because they're just not healthy and they're they don't they they're not getting their stuff together. You know? So I go talk to him. I, I'm asking him, Hey, you work out? He's like, No. I'm like, what would you do if somebody like started beating your ass? If somebody wanted to rob you, what would you do? I just see it in his eyes. He's like, I wouldn't be able to do nothing. And I was like, bro, you got to start working out. You know, so I, after after that first encounter, or the first time I brought that up, because I hadn't talked to this guy before, every time I see him now, hey, you on it? You working out? You you doing your thing? What, what you doing? What you up to? Push-ups? Oh, okay, man, all right, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. And that's how I came at him. I asked him, what would you do if somebody attacked you, if somebody wanted to rob you? And his answer was, I wouldn't be able to do nothing. And that is a, that's a scary answer. That's, it's kind of pathetic because as a grown man, I mean, he's a younger, younger man, but he's in his 20s. He's graduated from college. But how sad is that, that you know you can't even defend yourself? So when somebody comes up and they're like, give me your money, give me your lunch money, hey, give me your bag, yada, yada, I'm going to beat your ass. And your answer is like, oh, okay, here. Because you know you'd get your ass stomped out. That's sad. You're not even like, I, I can't even run away from these guys. They'll catch me, you know, within 10 steps. Because I'm so out, so out of shape. And that's why I stress working out and self-defense um we'll get into it at the end of the video but there's there's some tips i got for you too after mr jason hansen police and all that we know that violent so, crime murders rapes robbery has spiked ever since the pandemic and so we have people moving out of cia cities officer. because they are so lawless they're going to better places they're going to conservative states where there's actually the rule mm -hmm. of law so please please mm -hmm. listen to what i'm about to tell you when it comes to protecting yes, yourself sir. when it comes to stopping like an attack shirt. all right first what do we know <laughs> about attacks what do we know about criminal attacks well first yeah. it's going to happen fast so All it's right. not as if it's some guy work. is going to say in the Walmart park or Walmart parking lot, hey, you guys, uh, you know, with the black T-shirt on, in about 30 seconds, <laughs> I'm going to come and punch you in the face or I'm going to come and grab your purse. That's not how it works. It happens fast. I'll give you. That's true. Um, I took a CCW class and even the instructor had his own story about somebody that came up to him. He got out of his car. I believe he was going to put some gas. A guy walks up to him. This A mother effer comes at him, has a knife out. In no time, he had to draw his weapon by bank, which is why it's important to have a CCW, which is why it's important to have your state have CCW options or just be open carry state so you don't got to jump through all the hoops. But having a weapon on you helps a lot. Um, but he, he, didn't have any time to think he but only because he was a trained officer did he boom 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 
have the time to protect himself. Anybody else, somebody coming up on him, hey, mother effer, give me your wallet. You're backing up. You don't know what to do. You haven't been trained. That's why training is so important. Um, just people that pop off. You see it in certain videos. Somebody just walks up to somebody else. Hey, what the F, mother effort? Bam! They just, or they're not even talking. They're looking, talking with somebody else, doing something. Somebody just walks up, gets close, like too close to her comfort to me. I wouldn't let anybody walk up on me like that. Like, what the hell are you doing? You see somebody in your peripheral. It's already like, why are you, are you getting in my bubble? Um, but it happens. People just walk up to you. Bah! People just walk up to other people, just punch them, rob them, whatever. Uh, so it's why, too, it's important to not be around, running around in your city, drunk, high on drugs, you know, popping pills or something like that. Because now you're even less in even less of a position to defend yourself. You're just like, uh, uh, you know, somebody could see that and be like, man, this is a person, perfect per person to rob right now because they aren't giving an F. They're not even here. They're just, uh, you know. And that's why it's important to be sober when you're out and about. Put down the drugs, man. Some examples, down the some alcohol. personal examples from my youth and also one where thankfully a, I didn't get attacked. So when I was younger, I played in a pickup basketball league and I'm very competitive. I'm a type A personality, which probably doesn't come as a shocker to you. And we were having a pickup basketball game. It got very heated. I was I'm trash competitive talking. too, man. I'm competitive too. Put a, put a one in the comments if you're super competitive, man. That's me. I, I ain't losing. Pretty much nothing. everybody was trash talking. And I made fun, a definitely. very awesome basket against one guy. And I pointed to him and I said something to him. And so we're coming down the court and he passes the ball. And I look, of course, because I'm playing defense to pass the ball. And then all of a sudden he sucker punches me into the side of the face. I fall to the ground, of course. Has that happened to anybody? Sucker punchers, I hate them guys, man. I want to immediately get up and go murder the guy. So I stand up, start rushing him. But of course, everybody held everybody back. It was a typical basketball brawl. The guy yeah. got in his car, drove away. Almost every time you're on the court, almost anywhere you go, there's almost some kind of fight in basketball. But a lot of times, it's only guys being guys. And we got we to gotta, gotta square up and be right. You know, that's that competitive thing about and it. I never saw him again, but it happens fast. I was looking, staring at where he had passed the ball, trying to play some defense, and there was no, hey, Jason, about two seconds, I'm going to punch you in the jaw kind of thing. Let me give you another example. Years ago, my family and I were on vacation. We'd stopped in this little town. We were almost out of gas, so we had checked into the hotel. I went out by myself to get gas. As soon as I pull up to this gas pump, there's this guy who's standing at the entrance of the gas station, the convenience store. He starts walking towards me. He's flipping me off he's screaming yelling all kinds of things and of course i don't want to be trapped in the car so i immediately jump out of the car that way i'm able to fight i'm standing up i'm not in a vehicle and as soon as i jump out of the car he that's a great tip right there i wouldn't have thought of that you know somebody coming up to my car my thought process would be stay in the car with the doors locked or whatever but the guy could have a weapon he could have a gun get out the damn car um then, then you're stuck. And I've heard this from another uh, self-defense person uh, video that I watched. I've heard that. They're like, get out the car. If if you can, it's better to get out the car than to be in the car if you have an altercation with somebody. The first thing would be drive off if you can. If you can't, then get out the car. Um, that, So that's that's already two, three videos that I've seen where they're like, it's best if you can't get out of the area in your car, best to get out the car so you can have wiggle room to move around, move around the car. Again, the person could have a weapon, which is why I I, I suggest two of the best uh, things to carry on you that you can take anywhere. You can take them anywhere and they're highly effective. And this, uh, I got this from another self-defense video also but it's a flashlight and it's why cops use flashlights of course it's to look for things in the dark but look at that you see that oh your reaction boom whoa so you have a flashlight you just put this in somebody's eyes 
hands up, hands up. You know what I'm saying? So if your if your whole thing is to get away, and this could work with multiple people, one, two, three guys, they're walking up to you. It could even be in the daytime. Cause this is going, especially the flashlights we have now, this beam is going right in the eye, even in the day. So one to three people walking up on you, you just boom, they all uh, uh you're gone. Because here's one of the biggest things that you have to know about self-defense. Not about hanging around and fighting. Oh, the second thing you want to carry is is a mace. And they got different mace things. You don't want to carry the canister because sometimes some clubs be like, no, you can't bring that in here. But this just looks like a little carrying thing. I could have medicine in here or whatever. But this is, it's mace. And for what I heard from a instructor, if somebody is giving you a reason to pull this out and you need to use it, give them the whole cartridge. Don't give them a little sprit, sprit, sprit. Lay it out on them. Lay it on them. The two, three people that are with them, just air it out. Because that's the biggest thing with self-defense is to not get in that altercation. Yeah, somebody's coming up to you fast. You don't have a lot of room. Just keep backing up. Just keep backing up and circling. Because you don't know if they're going to pull out a knife. You don't know if they have friends with them that once you got them on the ground, then they come out and they're beating you up, hitting you with something. Um, you could break your hands. You could hurt that person and then go to jail. There's so many reasons to not get in that altercation. And it doesn't matter how much your pride is hurting you. Is it worth it to go to jail, get hurt? Get stabbed, get shot, start a beef that you're going to have to be walk, looking over your shoulder, whatever you go to that area again, whatever, you know, but just because somebody's talking crap to you, especially if you have a family, you have a job, like fighting out on the street is just one of the stupidest things you can do. And trust and believe, I know I've done it. Um, not thinking about my safety, not thinking about what could have happened if somebody else was with that person. So there's a lot of stuff going that goes on in a altercation when you're fighting with somebody out in the street. Too many variables, too many variables to try to cover for. So even if you have your flashlight, you got this, you got CCW, yada, 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 it's possible someone could still run up on you. I mean, I'd rather have my stuff on me, which is why I carry my tools everywhere, because it's my responsibility to defend myself. It's my responsibility to defend my family if anything happens when we're out and about. And it's my responsibility to teach my family members, hey, carry around some mace, carry around a flashlight, which I do. I make sure I make sure my mom has it, my daughter has it, you know, my brother and my guy friends, you know, I can tell them about this stuff, but I can't force them to have it. But you know, my sister too, I, I went and got her a mace and I tell them about the flashlights, you know, simple things that you can use because again, you know, most of the time a man is going to be stronger than a woman. Usually somebody that's robbing or doing, doing some crazy stuff like that, they're using an alcohol or drugs, so they're not in their right mind and you're going to need every advantage for yourself to get out of there as a woman, hey, as a guy too, but especially as a woman. So I make sure to tell all the women in my circle, protect yourself, carry your tools with you because it's on you. That's why it's called self-defense. So make sure you carry your tools on you and know number one, the number one thing in self-defense is to get the F out of there. Don't put hands. That's, the, that's only if you have to. If you're backing up, if you're trying to get out, you're trying to bring the situation down and everything's just not going and it has to go to hands and it has to go to hands. That's why I make sure that you train, make sure you're in shape, make sure you know at least some kind of moves that you're going to do to help yourself get out of the situation. If you have none of those things, you're just, you're just a sucker. You're just a mark waiting to get popped. That's how I see it. You're just waiting. You're just waiting out here for somebody to run up on you so you can play the victim.
and I'm not going to be a victim. She's my face. Not, he backs you know, up and he like goes, Chris oh my Rock. gosh, man, I'm so, so I'm sorry. Like I'm so, so I'm sorry. Victim, you man. drive the same friend that my car drives. I thought it was him. He's supposed to pick me up here. I've been waiting forever. And he's not answering his cell phone. I apologize. I apologize. In that case, it was mistaken identity. So thankfully, I was about, about, I was about to be about attacked. Car, However, drive to up to gas. the gas station. Literally, the second I drive up there, I got this guy walking towards me very, very fast. I have to hop out of my car. That's how fast attacks happen happen. So first thing to remember is time is not going to be on your side. They're going to be fast. Now, how do you prevent this? Well, you have your head up. You're paying attention to your surroundings. One time I was almost kidnapped. I saw two guys coming at me. They didn't blend in. Now remember, he's a, he's an ex CIA officer. So he was probably in some country doing some stuff and other, other officers, you know, people from that uh, country's military, yada, yada. So it's uh, like, that's not an everyday thing. I, I was almost kidnapped. Could be for in some areas, something to watch out for, but always keep your head on the swivel whenever you go somewhere. What's wrong with doing that? Taking a little, okay, there's an exit. There's some people that look kind of shady. There's some, you know, everybody else looking regular. Boom. All right. Go sit down. Just talking with folks, blah, blah, blah. You know, it doesn't got to be obvious. You don't got to be like crackhead scared, like, oh my gosh. Ah. But you're just in the moment. You're just talking. You're just keeping your head on a swivel. <laughs> so that if something does happen, you're kind of like, hey, why is that guy walking real fast over there to that group? And then I did see earlier, yeah, I kind of noticed that that person did say something to that person. All right, well, is this going to go down right now? Again, does this guy have a knife? Is he going to pull out a gun? Should we be worried? Let me keep an eye on this situation. Oh, okay. All right. Nothing happened. Okay. That's good. It's just a part of life, man. You're not walking around here like an NPC, like a zombie, like a mouth breather, like a window licker. You know what I'm saying? You got, we got some senses in us. So use them. And just know and understand that anywhere and everywhere you go, something could happen. So you, you want to stay in good spirits, but you want to stay aware and you just want to keep scoping the area just to be safe, man. I mean, how, it's not that hard. And we usually just go like this anyway. So it's like, it's not like you're, oh, I got to stay, maintain eye contact and in the conversation and blah, 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 blah. Nah, we're over here doing this. Or, okay, yeah, yeah. You know, why not? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, you know, we don't got to be in our phones. Be in the moment. Be there where you're at. And that'll help you. Just, it'll help, help you stay focused on the area you're in so you can see if things are going to happen. You know what I'm saying? With the environment, they didn't look like they should be there when we're in the same call. Uh, see, you notice things like culturally this. Everybody Notice little things like that. All right, we're here at a birthday party. Why are these guys wearing all black, you know? Or we're here at, at, at this, you know, we're here at the mall. Why are these guys, you know, standing over there just in the dark? Uh, you know, we're at the bar. This group over here is getting a little too damn faded. And they keep, you know, they're over here. You see it messing with people, you know, something to watch out for. So that's why you keep your head on that swivel, just continually looking around so you can continually assess the area. You're still having a good time, but you're being safe. The else had, so I see the two guys walking at me. I'm paying attention to my surroundings. When they're about 25 yards away, I notice them look at me, look at each other, and then they take a step to try and force <laughs> me in the middle of them. Well, of course, when I saw this, I turned around and ran. These two guys ran after me. But when somebody's trying to kidnap me, I become very, very fast, and I was able to get away from that. <laughs> Trained CIA operative. What does he do? He's like, I see these two guys. They're trying to kidnap me. So I go into jujitsu and I knock him out. No, he's like, I get the F out of there. I'm gone. I see something's, they coming after me. I'm gone. I'm gone. He's not going to stand around and try to fight off two grown ass men. No matter with his training or anything. Because I'm telling you, that's the last thing you want to do is get into that physical altercation. Running away, hit 
you know, getting out of the area, get into another area where it's more safe, more people. There's, you know, police officers, some that's ultimately the best thing that you're going to do in any situation where an altercation might happen. Just try to avoid it. Try to get out of it. That's the best thing that's going to, that you're going to want to do for yourself. <clears throat> the second thing is you're going to want to be healthy and fit and know how to throw them hands. Even if it's, because you just have a punching bag at home and you just, ah, I can go one minute and just punch, you know, it, it, something like that. Because that's what you're going to need out in the real world. You know, have your tools with you. Be able to use other things. Craig used a brick, you know, on uh, on Debo and Friday. Like, you might have to use whatever's around you to win to win this fight if you happen to get in it. So don't be scared. Understand and know. And that's why number that's why the number one thing is to get out of there. Because number two, this is real violence. And once it gets to people putting hands on each other, all rules are out the window. All rules are out the window, out the door. Say so you're gonna hit them with a brick, with a chair, you're gonna mace them, you're gonna put a light in their eye. You know what I'm saying? You can use the flashlight to hit them. You know what I'm saying? Um, hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him, you know, run and get out of there. Um, but that is what you're going to want to do once it, if it comes to it, you can't get out of it. You can't get out of it. It's going to get into that physical fight. Then you're like doing like Batman, bro. You are putting them down. You're doing hits that are taking them down. You're not there trying to have a boxing match and let me work my jab and, you know. You're going to want to know how to breathe properly, which is one of the biggest things for me in learning Muay Thai. It was like, I have to learn how to breathe. And that's why you hear professional boxers, or anybody professional when they're fighting, because that's an important aspect of fighting. Me, untrained, I would start fighting and hold my breath. It's just the natural reaction that happens when you fight. Just kind of, you hold your breath. You don't want to get hurt. It's just things are either going on. So you just kind of, you know, and I'll be tired. Like after like, like, why am I, like, why am I so tired? And it was because I wasn't breathing. Now that I've been training for a while, my breathing has gotten a lot better. So my mean being able to defend myself. I can do a lot better at it because I have, you know, like I said, those techniques so I can throw hands, you know, do whatever. And I know I'm breathing, so I'm not going to be as tired. And when the opportunity comes to get out of the area, I have that energy to get out or the energy to continue to, you know, to defend myself. I'm, I'm telling you, your health is going to play a giant part in self-defense. Even if you have a weapon, even if you have a gun. Think about it. You're all big. You got your gun in your waist belt. You got, you, you, oh, hold on. Let me pick up my stomach. and You know what I'm saying? Like, you be so slow, so out of shape that you try to pull out your weapon and, and because your hands are too fat, because you're all tired and sweaty, uh, 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 you freaking drop the gun or something you, because you're not out there practicing with that either. So it's like, is that even gonna save you if you're out because of Because I had my head up. So that's what gains you time, is paying attention to your surroundings. So mm -hmm. second important thing to know about self-defense is it's most likely to be in close quarters. Sure, in my instance, when the guys tried to kidnap me, it was on a street, I could run away. But in the majority of situations, it is gonna be close quarters. Meaning you're attacked in between two cars in the Walmart parking lot. Or you're in the bathroom when you're attacked. Or you're in some alley, but don't go in alleys. So it's most likely gonna be, you don't have a ton of space. So you need to be aggressive, go after them, because it's gonna be tight. Third important thing, I guess I could put up three as I just said too. Third important thing is that there's likely gonna be a weapon involved, which is why I teach people knife disarms, gun disarms, how to do it the right way, not the Hollywood way. So heaven, heaven forbid. Yeah, gun dis, uh, like I said, I'm gone, man, I'm gone. You know, if I don't have my weapon on me and got the draw on you first, you have the draw, I'm gone. You know, I, I, but that's why de-escalating the situation is so important. Just learning how to stay calm, how to try to get the whole situation calmed down, calm down other 
people in the situation. And like I said, a lot of the time, it's just by backing away slowly. <clears throat> it's just backing away slowly. Keep your hands up in case they, they try to come at you. You're not just with your hands down. Just say, hey, it's all good, man. Hey, I apologize. I didn't know I was offending you. Hey, it's all it's all good. We can just leave the area. We don't got to go any farther. Just even if it was you, just be like, hey, bro, I apologize, man. I apologize. Because your ego gets you in a lot of trouble. And it will definitely be digging into your ego. Somebody talking some stuff about you, whatever. But again, think about it. You're with your family, your friends. You're by yourself. And they have more people with them. You know, you're going to let your ego get you into trouble, get you hurt. No, forget that. Forget that. <clears throat> you're going to want to, like I say, you're going to want to assess the area, stay calm, try to de-escalate, and if not, back. be ready. Be ready with, the, with that violence. Because again, it might be a knife, might be a gun. If I've seen a weapon, I'm getting out of there. That's why I got pepper spray. That's why I got flashlight. If they got a weapon, you know, and I have time, I'm letting that pepper spray go, and I'm ghost. <clears throat> or, you know, like, you know, I got pepper spray on the eyes. Mother, trying to take, what? Nah. <laughs> and then I'm gone, you know. Hey, I'm just, I'm a man, you know what I'm saying? I, I get that upper hand. You try to get me whatever, and, and you're down for the count, whatever. I, I'm putting you down for the count. Really, really down. Like I said, like Batman, I'm giving you the uh, them down elbows, them, them knees to the to the ribs, trying to break your knee, trying to break your face. You know, don't mess with me. That's, that's what I tell people. Actually, it's like get yourself to a point where you're the warrior in the garden and not a, a gardener in the war. You know what I'm saying? Like, I tell people, I back up. I'm giving you the chance. Me leaving the area is good for you. Not only is it good for me, but something's going on. We're, we're, we're not, you know, we're, we're, we're clashing heads. We're bumping heads. And it's getting into an altercation. I will get myself out of it. Not because I got myself into it. I'm, I, I'm not like that. But, hey, something's going on, whatever. Whatever I see, it's, it's, it's escalating. I'm like, hey, man, whatever, bro. Keep going. Keep talking. Just we don't need none of that. You know, I'm trying to de-escalate. I'm doing that for you. Because if crap happens, if the shit hits the fan and we have to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, I'm out to hurt you. And so I'm trying to leave the situation for the benefit of you. But once something goes down and you put your hands on me, well, now you have to deal with me. And that's where I want you guys to be. I will try to get out of any and every fight possible unless it's something, you know, with family where, hey, it just has to be handled. But for most things, I'm like, man, I don't care. I don't need to, I don't need to be fighting like a puppy in the yard, you know, with somebody. I don't need to be fighting in the street like a damn dog. <clears throat> but if you get me to that point, I'm doing it to save you because if you put your hands on me, you're getting put down. I'm leaving you with a scar. You're going to remember me forever. And the one thing you're going to remember is don't, don't mess with me. Don't mess with that guy over there. That That's how I want you to be. That's where I want you to be. A little bit of training, a little bit of, of working out. I mean, what are you doing with your life? Why not have some kind of coach go to a class, be around other guys that are trying to better themselves and learn in martial arts because we're men. We're, we're the protectors of society. You know, what kind of man are you if you can't even protect yourself, your family? Somebody pulls a knife on you and starts trying to stab you and they're doing the prison move They're doing the the uh, you know sitting here going over and over. How do you actually stop that? Yes, you will get cut But there is a way to stop it that way you don't end up dead and you go home to your family So hey, if you want to know watch this video Jason Hansen on YouTube three weapons are likely gonna be involved and four 
You got to prepare for multiple That's attackers. That's why I got mine. Birds of a feather That's flock I together. And I keep so it might not too. only be one guy who's trying to assault you in the Walmart parking lot. He's trying to assault you too. when you're walking out of a restaurant with your wife one day, going to back to your car after a great meal. There might be two guys, might be three guys. Same thing for home invasion. If you're sitting in your living room and somebody kicks in the door, it might not be just one guy by himself. It might be two guys. So you have to train and be prepared for multiple attackers, which is of course what I train my students in. Other very important things. Pay attention to these. One, target the head, okay? Target the head, target the throat area. So basically, go from the neck up mm -hmm. if you are punching people. Sensitive so yes, areas. you can do knees. You can do a nice knee to the groin. Nothing wrong with that. But a lot of people I train, they say to me, hey, you got two days to give me everything I need <laughs> because I'm going overseas or I'm going here or hey, I'm a high net worth executive that doesn't have any more time than this is why it should be a high priority in your life that you're not just like, hey, uh, give me uh, two days of practice. Like, get this set into your life. One class a week with a coach where, uh, at a gym or something where you're getting some Muay Thai, some boxing, you know, a lot of MMA, different types of things going on. You can learn. They're all good. It's all discipline. It all teaches you how to keep calm, how to de-escalate situations, and how to handle yourself if the situation goes too far in two days so i say if you're going to train a lot well it's sure go to some fancy kickboxing go to man. fancy knees but guess what the problem is when you knee when you lift up your foot well guess what you're only standing on one foot now and how balanced are most of us on one foot not very balanced especially when the adrenaline is pumping especially when you're in a dangerous situation which is why i say okay for most people yeah, that's what he says. For most people, just go for the, the soft, sensitive areas. But if you've been training, you know, like I said, me going on two years, I'm going to throw them knees. I'm throwing them elbows if I have to. Uh, you know, like I said, but a lot, a lot of what he's saying is 100% correct. Go for that throat. Go for that nose. Go for them eyes, you know, especially if you're a lady. Go for them ears. You know how freaking ears hurt? You're pulling somebody's ear. You got somebody's nose and somebody's ear, and you're just twisting. Do you think this person is like, eh, it's all right. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing here. Nah, you're, you're like, ah, they're like, ah. You know, even if they're drunk on drugs or whatever, that crap hurts. They're going to stop what they're trying to do to you, and they're going to try to stop you from hurting them. Um. So, it, best things, like I said, this is a 100% trained professional. Best thing to do is to listen to the trained professionals. But I'm also here to tell you to get yourself trained. Become trained. Semi-trained. A little bit of trained. People do not use anything. Learn how to throw a punch. There's a couple of guys I knew when I started getting into this. I'm like, hey man, you know, I bought the gloves, I bought the pads, like let, let, let's, you know, let's do some boxing drills with two different guys, two different occasions just in the same week. I'm like, hey, let's go. One minute. I got the gloves up. These guys can't throw punches. They're getting tired. One, uh, uh, one minute. Uh, uh, uh. Said, I'm like, what the hell's going on? Like, that's not how you throw a punch. I'm over telling them, like, Okay, you know, you got to slip the jab, slip the jab, and things that I've learned from my coach, breathe, breathe, you know, breathe out when you're punching, you know, get the, the shoulder and the hips, it's a, it's a body, throwing a punch isn't just throwing your arm, you're putting your whole body into it, so uh, you get your, your, your hips, shoulder, into that, into that, and then combos, and, and, and how to keep your feet right, so you're not crossing your feet and tripping. A lot of things go into it, so it is. It's great to start learning this stuff because, like I said, you're gonna want to hit them in these places. But if you don't even know what to do, uh, hit, I heard hit them in the nose. Uh, no, it's like hit them in the nose, hit them in the nose, hit them in the nose. You know, not like some little like. Uh, uh. So you have to practice these things to put that force behind it. Even in an open palm strike, which is actually hurts a lot. Just, ah, just, just hitting somebody with the bottom of your hand. Just, mm, just, mm. and, but you got to know these things a little bit. You got to, you got to practice it. If you don't know it, then you're just, ah, you're going to attack. Ah. 
You know, like somebody that doesn't know how to swim, you throw them in the water, they're, are they going to be like, oh, I've seen this before. I've seen, so so no, I know how to do it. No, they might be like, I've seen people swim and they do this, but they're still like, oh, I don't know what to do. Ah, it's a jerk. They drown. Same thing, somebody fight. Oh, I've seen fighting movies. I watch MMA, but you don't ever practice anything other than you, you go like that every once in a while. You get in a fight, you're like, ah, you know, you're not. Punching and doing all this stuff with style and class. You, ah! you know, it's important. It's all, it's it's on you, especially as a man. It's on you. You don't know how to do these things. You don't know how, any kind of martial art, any kind of uh, way to defend yourself. You're not healthy. That's on you. Below the so belt, meaning don't the use gym. your legs or whatever. Use your hands. Use your fists. Whether it's just coming out with a jab and a right cross, whether it's coming out with a palm strike, go to the neck up. A strike to the throat will do wonders. A strike to the face will do wonders. So if I have a big guy and he comes up to me and I say, hey, I'm just gonna try punching him in the chest. Well, probably not gonna <laughs> feel good, but I'm likely to not likely to stop that big guy. So right, we do right. not want to do punches to the chest area. We want to focus on the head because I don't how, uh, care how big you are. I don't care how tough mm -hmm. you are, how strong you are. If I start mm -hmm. wailing on you in the face and throat, doesn't matter if you're Shaquille O'Neal, who's seven foot yep. tall, it's not gonna feel good. He's going to cover up it's going to give you time to escape yep I, this is all bone in your knuckles bone bone against face it doesn't need to be like even just go like that just like in your eye give it a little force like that uh, hurts that hurts you know just having some just somebody going like that to you that hurts so it, you know you got eye or girl you could just Somebody's trying to grab you, whatever you have, your arms, uh, you know, available. Just da, 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 you start bah, 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 just hitting them in the face. Ah, ah, you know, that's again, it's going to stop the attacker, what they're doing. They're going to want to stop you, what you're doing. Give you time to get out of there. But again, if you've never done anything like that, if you've never, ah, 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 then what do you, somebody grabs you, you're just, ah, 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 ah. Like, and then it's like, wow, like this person, you're just walking around wanting to get beat up. Basically, that's how I kind of see it. Like somebody attacked you, what happened? What? Okay, you backed up. Did you have your pepper spray? Your, did you have a knife, a flashlight on you, anything? No, no, no tools. Oh, um. so what happened? One person, they came up to you, they punched you. Did you try to move out the way? No, I don't, I don't practice that. Oh, they punched you, they punched you one, two times and you fell down and they took your wallet. What the hell? Yeah, man. Like, is that the story you want to be telling people? Oh, I got robbed, uh, you know, punched me in my stomach, fell on the ground, took my wallet, oh, 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 you know. Oh. Start lying, say they had a knife and a gun on you, five people. <laughs> like one scrawny, cracked out guy, you're just so scared. Like, oh, I'll take my face. Ah. You know, don't be a little whip like that, bro. Like, be to the point where most people that see you are like, don't mess with that person. And it, you don't have to be all the way fit, but just walking with your head up, walking with your shoulders back. You know what I'm saying? That just walking with some kind of confidence in yourself. And you, if you don't have that confidence, you start working out, you start training you know, some kind of self-defense, some kind of MMA or, or self-defense art, some um, something like that, that confidence starts building in you. You're like, what the heck? It, it doesn't necessarily have to be from you going out and beating somebody up, but just practicing. You're like, whoa, I've been in the gym like two weeks, a month, six months, and, you know, I, I'm getting better. I'm, I'm lifting. I, I see a little bit of changes in my body. That confidence starts coming in. So you don't even have to, you don't have to look like all perfect and chiseled and everything to have that confidence and that swagger. You have to be doing it though to start building that confidence, hanging out with other guys, your coaches, your teachers, you know, like I said, learning as your skills get better in all aspects of, of conditioning, cardio, lifting, and the martial art, the fighting technique, you're like, Two months ago, I couldn't even do this little hole. Now look at me, Pat. 
it builds confidence in you. You know, don't take it for granted. A martial art or working out, don't take that for granted. What it's going to do for you on the inside, what it's going to do for your for your confidence, it, it will build it. You might not feel it at the beginning. You might feel weird and awkward walking into the gym to work out, walking into the boxing gym or that MMA gym, and there's guys wrestling on the floor all oh, yeah, and you're like, oh, I don't want, I don't want to look dumb or whatever. Who cares? Get through that. It only lasts like about a week or two. Then you're just like, this is it. I'm, I'm good. I, I'm in the flow now. And the longer you stay with something, the more confident and better you get at it. So that you carry that with you. You carry that around with you. And when most people see a confident person, they're just like, nah, I'm not going to mess with that person. You you wonder why the the wimps in school continued to get bullied even if they went to another school, they get bullied by the bully, and it's because their demeanor, they're, they're just like that wimp. They're just waiting to be a victim. Don't have that about yourself. Be relaxed, be calm, be confident, and that comes with doing the work. So remember that. Target the face, the neck up. So when I say face, I mean throat and face. Don't worry about the low line kicks, unless you're going to train. Now, if you're going to train, that's awesome. Good deal. Mm -hmm. But most uh -huh. people don't have the time. Get your training up. Are too busy, which is why. I and that's a lie too, because most people spend a couple of hours a day on their phone or on the TV watching shows or something. And one hour a week with the coach, you can still watch your movie, your videos, blah, 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 blah. You can fit in that one hour, one hour less of watching TV or being on your phone. That's nothing. You're still getting the same amount of. All that time, you're missing one hour, but you're bettering yourself so much more than any scrolling of a TikTok or anything could do, man. It, it's so crazy the little amount of time it takes for you to start bettering yourself versus the amount of time that we waste. And trust me, I'm a big old time waster, man. <laughs> I, I am on myself always about, like, are you just wasting time right now? Are you wasting time? You have things to do. You can go promote this. You can go promote your music. You can go promote your books. You can go promote your podcasts. You know, I have, there's things I can be doing at any and all times of the day. So when I'm not doing them, I really feel like I'm not, you know, living to my potential. So it's a battle that I live with all the time. You know, work, 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 work. Always be on this, always be on that. Yeah, kind of. I don't mind it. Uh, but then there's also lots of Lots of times where I'm just like, do, 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 you know, I'm watching TV, but I've set up my life where I train at least three times a week. You know, I lift and work out and jog. I train with my Muay Thai coach one time a week. You know, that's on top of the working out. Um, I give myself time to promote. Um, so like being hard on myself, that's just kind of just. It's just how you are when when you're when you are when you are the kind of person like I said earlier I'm I'm very what's the word bro I like I said I like winning um I, man what's the word I'm looking for <laughs> you know I I love winning so much that I'm not going to where was I going with that <clears throat> anyways anyways it'll come back say target up here because it doesn't matter if he's 300 pounds it doesn't matter say training if he's 100 pounds that's the way to stop an attacker the final thing I want to share with you which is critically important also never throw just one punch if you use a firearm for home defense just like I use a firearm home defense I'm not going to sit there come out here with my gun when a guy's rushing at me say he's going to kill me and go pop and then wait for him okay okay did that solve it wait for the guy to come <laughs> on top of me and try and kill me true. no I'm going to go pop 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 until I see that threat stop true that is 100% true you don't stop until it drops, you know, until the threat is over. You know it's it's done. There's no more threat is when you stop. And so he's saying here, it's the same with self-defense. You start throwing them hands, do not stop throwing them hands until that person is down 
or you have given yourself enough room or whatever to get back out of there to escape. So, you know, I really like this video. This guy, 100% right. And again, he's not telling you any, any specific like move, but he's telling you the things you need to have set in place so you can defend yourself. And he's giving you the option of how you're going to do it. He's not saying like, you must know Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You must know, you know, Muay Thai. You must know this. He's just, he's giving you generalities and you can then choose what martial art you want to go to, how to defend yourself and things of that nature. But he is giving you, with no kind of training, he's giving you great tips on how to defend Until yourself. Until I seize down, which is why you're never just gonna sit there and come out, boom, okay, look, guy's not down, he's gonna be on top of you. As you come out, you do multiple punches. Always remember, you're gonna do multiple punches until that threat is down, until that until threat is no longer a threat. So please damn. remember, target the head, neck up, and always Good. throw multiple punches. If you wanna yes, train sir. with me yes, in an intense, admittedly intense class where we do airsoft training, where Ooh. we're in the rubber padded suits, the stuff that is reality-based, meaning more real world, Whoa. go to the link below, go to spydangerous.com, you will see what I do. I pray. That's pretty dope right there. I would do it just to have some fun or whatever. I, I, I don't think I would be in any of those situations. Um, but, you know, the, would you do a class like that? I definitely would. Put a one in the chat if you would do, uh, if you would try this out. I'm going to look into this and see how much it costs, whatever. And if it looks like it's worth it, you might, you know, you can just catch some videos of me tied up in the trunk while I get out yeah <laughs> that sounds fun it sounds like an escape room uh, but you're actually really learning some real world stuff here that is dope so that's this is Jason Hansen former CIA telling you how to defend yourself in, in generalities you know when it comes to me I say work out hit that gym at least three times a week I work on your full body work on the cardio get into a class at least once a week of self-defense any kind of mma or martial art and carry your tools with you flashlight uh pepper spray you know carry a knife on you it's great for cutting strings that's mostly what i use it for cutting strings and stuff like that but if you need it i'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it um so that's what I say. Keep your tools on you, get yourself fit, and get yourself trained so that if anything happens, you can defend yourself. Self-defense is up to the self. So knowing the cops aren't going to come right away, knowing people aren't going to rush in to help you, knowing all these things, know that you need to get yourself right. And it's for yourself. And it's not like working out and learning a martial art is going to hurt you at all. It's only going to better yourself and give you a better chance of defending yourself. I told you, there you go. It's on you now. It's on you. It's always on you. It's always going to be on you. And is it? wouldn't it be good you take a class, you're learning some kind of martial art, and then you meet other people that are learning this martial art. And then you hang out with these people. You get one or two of them in your friend group. So now when you go out, there's at least two or three people that know how to defend themselves. Like How much safer, how much more confident are you going to feel when you're out and about? Knowing that you have the skills and your friends have the skills. You know what I'm saying? Like, it changes your whole mindset when you take self-defense, when you take your health into your own hands and you actually handle it. You actually start doing it. Give it give it a month, man. And then come back and tell me how you feel. Am I talking crap? Am I talking on my ass? Or am I telling you the truth? You're gonna see, I'm telling you the truth. So this is Apocalypse Phoenix. Thank you for checking out the video. Hit the like button, hit the follow button, hit the join button, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button. Hit that like button. I appreciate you guys watching the video. You can find me on Rumble under Apocalypse Phoenix Says Podcast. 
You can find me on YouTube under Apocalypse Phoenix Podcast. You can find me on Kick, Apocalypse Phoenix, one word. You can find me on IG, Apocalypse.Phoenix. You can find me on TikTok, AP Sounds. You can find me on Twitter, Apocalypse Phoenix. You can find me on Facebook, Apocalypse Phoenix. You can find my music on Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, Deezer, YouTube Topic. Anywhere, any music platform that is out there, you will find my music, Apocalypse Phoenix. I got. I just dropped a couple of new songs within the last couple of months. They're fire. Sea Walk Christ is dope. Lamb of God, dope. Christ-like is dope. This is the way is dope. You know, let me know what you think about the songs in the in the comments, um, man. And I have my I have all my music up so you can see uh, how it started and how I am now. I want to see people. I want to show people that you can change through my music. And so all of my music is up for you to listen to. It's good stuff, man. I, I just tooting my own horn. Um, but it's all for you, man. I want to be of value to you guys. So I appreciate appreciate you guys checking out my music. I appreciate you guys checking out the podcast. I appreciate you guys, you know, checking in on me and everything that, that you guys do. I, I appreciate it. Love you guys. Take care. See you in the next video. God bless. I'm out this pace.